Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and this is a GCSE top grade top up for higher tier. This lesson, empirical formula. This is one of my most in-demand topics and it's been requested by Survivor Ollie, TV Cow, Rebecca Petfan, Shakif Udin, Naomi Johnson, Neve Tennyson, Nadia Musavi, Skate <coughs> Nation, Sawera Mohammed, Hannah Dorle, Loopy Lou 4030 and Jane Ong. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic that you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. I'd also like to take a moment to say hello to the science students of Combe Valley High School who I visited last week and I know have been watching lots of these videos. Hi guys. I think the reason why empirical formula has been requested by so many people is because the first couple of times that you see it, it can seem quite complex. And there's two real reasons for this. The first one is that it involves a multi-stage calculation. And that can seem a little tricky. It's not as difficult as it sounds though, and we'll go through it in just a moment. The other reason why it seems quite difficult sometimes is because to try and make it a more interesting little bit of maths, usually chemistry teachers will do one experiment which illustrates this. And that is you'll have a go at oxidizing magnesium ribbon. And the magnesium combines with oxygen from the air. And the idea is that the increase in mass allows you to figure out how much oxygen has been added and from that you can figure out what the formula of magnesium oxide is. Is it Mg2O or is it MgO2? What's the ratio of those two different elements within magnesium oxide? Unfortunately, in order for this experiment to work, you need to lift the lid off the crucible and as you do that, um, you tend to get some of the magnesium lost as smoke. It's something which requires very, very precise measurement of very, very tiny changes in masses when you're doing this in a normal school science lab. And unfortunately, you're probably going to be losing some of that mass every time you lift the lid off the crucible. And so that's not gonna work out so well when you come to measure those changes in masses. Your chemistry teachers have done this though, just to try and liven things up a little bit. Try not to worry about it though. I promise it's simpler than it feels. So onto the calculation, and the first thing that you need to remember is don't let this calculation make you feel any madder. Because that is the terrible acronym that I've managed to come up with to help you remember the stages of the calculation. M for masses, because you're going to find the masses first. A for AR, because you're going to look up the relative atomic masses of the different elements involved. D, because then you'll do a division. And finally, R, because then you're going to find a ratio. So try and remember those stages matter. And let's go through each one of them in turn. First, M for masses. Usually on an exam paper, they just give you the masses that you need to work with. But it's possible, for example, on a six mark question, that they'd want you to write the slightly more detailed explanation of how you find the masses. So let's stick with our example of oxidizing magnesium. The first thing that you'd need to do is measure the mass of the crucible that you're going to react things in while it's completely empty because you're going to need to subtract this from the other masses which you measure later on. Then you'd put your magnesium into the crucible and you'd weigh the whole thing again. You'd find the mass of it again. If you take the mass of the magnesium plus the crucible and you subtract the original mass of the crucible, you'll have the mass of the magnesium. After you've done the experiment, you'll do something pretty similar. What you'll do is you'll take the mass of the crucible with the magnesium oxide inside it, and then again, you'll subtract the mass of the crucible. And so before you'll get the mass of the magnesium and after you'll get the mass of the magnesium oxide. As I say, usually they just give you the mass of the magnesium and the magnesium oxide, but if you need to write a longer answer question, make sure you talk about measuring the mass of the crucible first and then subtracting that from each of those values. With that in mind, let's start putting some numbers in. So let's say that you started out with 9.6 grams of magnesium. And once you'd reacted that completely with oxygen from the atmosphere, you were left with 16.0 grams of magnesium oxide. What's happened here? Well, it's quite simple. The magnesium that we started with has joined onto oxygen atoms and those oxygen atoms they have mass and so they've added some extra mass. All you need to do is work out how much mass they've added and that's really really simple. You just take whatever the mass is that you finished up with, 
the 16.0 grams in this case. And from that, you subtract the mass of the magnesium that you started with, the 9.6 grams. You must be left with whatever the mass of the oxygen that's been added is. So in this case, 16.0 minus 9.6 gives you 6.4 grams of oxygen. Now, we don't know the ratios of that oxygen to the magnesium, and we don't need to worry about that at this stage. All you're doing is seeing what mass of oxygen has been added. Now, it's possible for some of you, and this isn't true for all exam boards, but certainly for some of you, you might be dealing with percentages instead of masses in grams. Don't worry, there is a really simple way to deal with that. Change the percentage sign to a G for grams and it will work exactly the same, I promise you. So that was step one, M for masses. Pretty easy, right? You're just doing a subtraction. The next step, A for AR values, is even easier. You don't need to do any calculations at all. All you need to do is look up the relative atomic masses of the elements you're working with in your periodic table. Or possibly, in some exams, you'll be given the relative atomic masses in the question itself, so you won't even need to look them up. If you do need to look them up, remember the relative atomic mass, that is the mass number of that element, is always the large number in its periodic table entry. Usually your periodic table is going to have a key which reminds you which number is which, but you're always going for the large number. So for magnesium, the relative atomic mass is 24, and for oxygen, the relative atomic mass is 16. Make a note of those. And that's step two done. For step three, divide, what I like to do for a start is summarize the information that we've already got. And I suggest as you go through steps one and two, you lay out the information on your question paper in exactly the same way. So for M, we've got the masses of magnesium and oxygen, that was 9.6 grams and 6.4 grams. And then for step two, we had the AR values. So write those directly underneath. So we've got an AR for magnesium of 24, and we've got an AR for oxygen of 16. So make sure you've got the masses for each element directly above the AR values for each element. And then, once you've laid it out like that, step three is even easier still. You need to do a divide. But to know which divide you're going to do, it's really straightforward. All you need to do is add a line between each mass value and each AR value. So the divide that you're going to do for magnesium is going to be your 9.6 divided by 24. The divide that you're going to do for the oxygen column is going to be your 6.4 divided by 16. And again, you'll be able to use a calculator in all of these exams, so this should be a really trivial uh, calculation to work out. When you type the first calculation into your calculator and convert it to a decimal if you need to, you should get an answer of 0 0.4. When you type the second calculation into your calculator and convert it to a decimal, in this case, you also get 0 0.4. At this point, you may actually, if you're smart, be able to completely finish the question. But if in doubt, there is a final stage which we can go to. So, in our MADDER acronym, the final stage is R, the ratios. You need to convert this relationship to a ratio. Now, you can probably already see what the ratio is going to be here, but let me show you how to work out the ratio in any case, and this will work for anything. And it's really, really simple as well. To work out the ratio of these two numbers, and that will give you the ratio of the elements in the formula, all you need to do is divide both of those numbers by whichever the smallest one is. So if the smallest one was 0.1, you'd divide both of them by 0.1. In this case, we're going to divide both of them by 0.4 because they're both 0.4, they're both the smallest. So if you divide 0.4 by 0.4 on your calculator, you'll get an answer of one for magnesium. And if you divide 0.4 by 0.4 on your calculator for oxygen, then of course, you're going to get one as well. Your ratio is a one-to-one -one ratio in this case. So hopefully laying things out like this, M for masses, A for AR values, D for doing the divide between those two numbers, and R for finding the ratio, 
Laying things out like that should make things pretty straightforward for you. And this should work every single time. The last thing you need to do is say what this ratio, whatever you've got, means. So a one-to-one -one ratio just means that for every one atom of magnesium, we've got one atom of oxygen. If we had a two-to-one ratio, then for every two atoms of magnesium, we'd have one atom of oxygen. If we had a one-to-two ratio, then for every one atom of magnesium, we'd have two atoms of oxygen. And we can just take those numbers and stick them straight into our chemical formula in exactly the same order as we've written them here. So Mg, and we've got a one there, so it's Mg1. And O, we've got a one there as well, so it's O12. So this case, we have Mg1, O1. Now, of course, chemists would normally write that as MgO. They wouldn't bother writing the ones there. But don't worry if you feel a need to write those ones just while you're working it through. Just remember to get rid of them in the final stage, okay? If it was, let's say, Mg2O1, then we'd write it as Mg2O. If it was Mg1O2, then we'd write it as MgO2. Hopefully that's made what can seem like a quite intimidating topic seem much easier for you. Remember, don't let it make you madder. M for masses, A for AR values, D for divide, and R for ratio. Get all those steps in there and you should be able to work out the empirical formula for anything. Give it a try. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.